about the purpose driven church. Let's talk about what makes a purpose driven church. First, we begin by talking about what it is not, because my goodness, there are so many wrong impressions, so many misunderstandings about the purpose driven church. And then, of course, we're going to talk about what it is, right? What makes a purpose driven church? Let's talk about what is it is not. It is not about your doctrine or denomination. No, this is not a doctrinal issue, this is not a denominational issue. You can be charismatic and purpose driven, you can be Pentecostal and purpose driven, you can be Methodist and purpose driven, you can be Bible church and purpose driven, you can be anything and purpose driven. Okay? I would say hallelujah to that. <laughs> because we're not talking, and it also brings everybody together. It's about intentionality, it's not about obedience, right? So, what is it not? It's not about doctrine or denomination. There are now purpose churches, purpose driven churches in practically every Christian denomination, even Reformed Catholic. Reform Catholic events, everyone, okay? And we work with denominations to strengthen the churches. We serve everybody, and I've taught and trained all types of pastors. Number two, it is not about your worship style. It is not about your worship. Karana, the Karana, Vanda, the Vanda. You want to yell and scream? Go for it. You want to sit back quietly and howl? Go for it. It is not about the worship style. Purpose driven does not. Tell you that this is how a purpose driven church worships. It's not. Number three, it is not about being contemporary or relevant. It is not about being contemporary or relevant. This style, we, do, we dress like this, this is what, how we do things. Uh -huh. There are purpose driven small churches of 50 people in a house. There are purpose driven of massive mega churches. So it's not the style, it's not the way you do it, it's not about contemporary or relevant. It's not that. Number four, it is not about who you're trying to reach. Oh, we're trying to reach slum people. Oh, we're trying to reach city dwellers. Oh, we're trying to reach the upper middle class. Oh, we're trying to reach English speaking, Hindi speaking. What uh, about these It's not about your thing. That's not purpose driven. Number where are we? One, two, three, four, five. It's not about being seeker sensitive. Most people think that purpose driven churches are out to get, you know, and we're shifting everything. Watering everything down, making everything very, very liberal, you know, everything very worldly, and trying all the styles of the world just to get people and to become sick. Ah, ah, no, no, it's not that either. It's not about the size of your church. Purpose driven is about saying, hey, come, we we'll teach you a secret on how to grow a mega church. This is how to grow. This is not how to grow a mega church. Because I grew up six feet tall, but my brother is not six feet tall. We both came from the same mother. We both ate the same food. We both had the same parents, same love, same affection. He grew to his size. DNA decided that. I grew to my <laughs> It's not about size. So it's not about saying, here's a secret. You apply this. Wow. Lots of people are going to come. Lots of money is going to come. Uh -huh. Okay. And lastly, it's not about your location. It's not about your lake. Purpose of churches are found all around the world with more outside the United States than inside. Okay, let me add one more thing. Purpose Driven Churches is not about reward. And it is not about saddlebag. And you can be purpose driven without being holding Rick Warren's hand, Pastor Rick Warren, or saying saddlebag five times at the end of every sentence. Right? So it has nothing to do with the church. That church is a blessed church. That church is a friend church to us, to us, to Kelly, to Pastor Kelly, to others. We love that church, we love Pastor Rick, we love his team. And they grew, and they are healthy because Pastor because God blessed his ministry. And he grew to whatever he could grow within God's blessing and his ministry. Praise God, hallelujah, and may the Lord bless him. Now I have to look at Delhi. I have to look at my situation and I have to look at my context. And I need to say, what do I need to do to be obedient to God in my context so that the Lord would enable growth? The Lord will enable. It is not wrong to want growth. I repeat, it is not wrong to want growth. I repeat, it is not wrong to want growth. Why? Because growth means you're alive. Okay? Growth means you're alive. And if you're alive, you'll keep growing. The moment I've grown to full, So as soon as you're mature, as soon as you've reached completion of maturity, you're expected to multiply. So growth is always expected. 
And then as the kids grow up, it's like, 